Alright, in this video I'm just going to do a few more follow-up problems converting degrees to radians and then also we'll do some radians to degrees and after that we'll talk about again finding these angles on a circle. Okay, so I'm going to use the same basic formula that I did before that pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. Okay, so again I start off with my formula 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 180 my pins dying here sorry and so on the left side again you get one degree you have pi over 180 on the right side well I want to get 215 so you simply multiply both sides by 215 you'll get 215 over 180 pi and let's see what is 215 divided by 180 I should have thought about this one a little bit a little bit more um, let's see well 15 goes into 180 how many times I believe that'll be 12 But 15 doesn't go into 215, so maybe not, maybe not a good choice here. Let's see. Well, they're certainly both divisible by five. So this is 43 on top. I thought I'd picked out a better one. Apparently, I didn't. But that's okay. It doesn't always have to work out nice and evenly. And 36 on the bottom. Well, 43 is a prime number, so that's our angle in terms of radians, 43 over 36 pi. And actually, I can give you a rough estimate as to where that is on a unit circle, but in general, it can be kind of tricky. Almost all the angles that you'll use will be a multiple of a 6 in the denominator, a 3, or a 2, and you'll see that as you go along a little bit more. All right, so 420 degrees, again, we start off the exact same way. We start with 180 degrees equals pi radians. We'll divide both sides by 180. That'll give me 1 on the left side and pi divided by 180 on the right. Well, if you multiply both sides by 420, I'll get 420 on the left. I'll get 420 times pi over 180 and I believe this one will re reduce down a little bit better so 420 degrees let's see 30 definitely goes into 180 six times 30 goes into 420 um, let's see what would that be so 10 times would give us 300 so it looks like we need another four but I can simplify this down a little bit further as well. I can divide top and bottom by 2. So I have 3 on the bottom and 7 thirds pi is going to be equivalent to 420 degrees. Oops, got a little cut off there, sorry. And last but not least, negative 30 degrees. So again, I'm just going to divide both sides by, well, I'll start off again with my pi equals 180 degrees. We'll divide both sides by 180 and get pi over 180 equals 1 degree. And then again, simply we'll multiply the right side by negative 30. We'll do that same thing to the left side. And if we simplify this down, well, negative 30 over 180 is going to give us negative pi over 6 being equivalent to negative 30 degrees. Okay, so this is the basic trick from converting from degrees to radians. Simply divide your initial pi equals 180 formula and then just multiply by you know the equivalent angle that you're trying to get out like we have every single time.
Let's talk about where these angles are on a unit circle. At least I'm going to talk about these last two for sure. And then we'll convert some from radians to degrees. Okay, so let's make our unit circle here. I'll make it a little bigger. I'm going to put it in red here. My red pen's working. So again, this is our circle of radius 1. Again, maybe not the best circle on Earth, but... So this is 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and then on the left, negative 1, comma, 0. Okay. So if we want to find this first angle, 7 pi over 3, well, a lot of times I think a good way to think about it, so 7 pi over 3, the best thing to do is probably to think about this in terms of a mixed number. So 3 goes into 7 two times with 1 third left over. So I'm just converting 7 over 3 into 2 and 1 third. Well, we said the distance around the circle is 2 pi to begin with. So if I go the entire 2 pi, I'm back right here where I started. And then it says you need to go another 1 third pi or equivalently, pi over 3. Well, this angle up here is the angle pi over 3. So this is where I'll be touching the unit circle. So it turns out, this is another important point, angle representations are not unique. We've actually just shown now, I mean, right if you go to pi over 3, you're going to be right here in the circle. If you go all the way around to pi, you're back where you started. Again, remember when we measure angles from the positive side of the x-axis. Well, if I go another pi over 3, I'm in the same place. So the angle pi over 3 is equivalent to the angle 2 and 1 thirds pi. Let's do the same thing for our other one. So our negative 30 degrees, or negative pi over 6. Well, pi over 6 is considered to be kind of a, definitely a smaller angle. So this is the angle that goes with positive pi over 6. Okay. Well, negative means instead of going in a counterclockwise direction, we measure in the positive clockwise direction. Or, excuse me, just the clockwise direction. So instead of going up pi over 6, we're simply going to go down a distance of pi over 6. So I'm just going to reflect that angle about the x-axis, and this will be considered, again, this angle has measure pi over 6, but we consider this to be the angle negative pi over 6, again, remembering to measure negative in the clockwise direction. Again, if you go all the way around, that's equivalent to 2 pi, and 2 pi is equivalent if we get common denominators, I could write that as actually 12 pi over 6. So 2 pi and 12 pi over 6 are the same. I didn't go all the way to 12 pi over 6, though. I went basically a pi over 6 fewer. So this angle negative pi over 6 is going to be equivalent to the angle 11 pi over 6. Okay. So again, a little confusing, I think, if this is the first time you've ever done this stuff, for sure. So there's our angles. Again, this one being negative pi over 6, and positive pi over 3 up here at the top. So let's convert a couple from radians into degrees, just to be complete. I'm going to use my red pen again since my other pen's running out. So we start off with our pi equals 180 degrees. And here we don't have to really divide or do anything. It says, well, we want 3 pi over 4 on the left side. So simply we'll take that formula and multiply both sides by 3 over 4. So on the right side, I'll get 3 times 180 over 4. 
Well, let's see, 4 goes into 180 how many times? I believe 45 times. And if you take 3 times 45, that'll give you 135 degrees. So it says 3 pi over 4 is equivalent to 135 degrees. Likewise, if we do 7 pi over 6, we'll just multiply, again, our formula pi over 180 degrees. I'm just going to multiply on the left by 7, 7 over 6 and on the right by 7 over 6. So I'll get 7 times 180 over 6. Well, 6 goes into 18 3 times, so that means 6 will go into 180 30 times. So we'll get 7 times 30, or 210 degrees. Okay. So again, it says that 7 pi over 6 is equivalent to 210 degrees. Last but not least, negative pi over 3. Well, you're basically multiplying by a negative one-third. So if you multiply 180 by negative one-third, 180 divided by 3 again being 60, you'll get the angle of negative 60 degrees. Okay. So the same basic idea to convert from radians to degrees in this case, it all comes back to this basic formula of pi equals 180 degrees. So let's talk about where these angles are real quick on the circle. So 135 degrees, well 90 degrees is at the top, 180 is on the left side. Well, that means the right side, excuse me, the left side, this is going to be 90 degrees. Well half of that is 45 degrees, so right in the middle, if we add another 45 degrees, I'm going to be here at 135 degrees, or equivalently, 3 pi over 4. Okay. So this would be the angle 3 pi over 4. Maybe I'll do one other one, the negative 60 degrees. Pi over 3 we saw was equivalent to positive 60 degrees. So in the same way, if I go down that same angle, I'm going to be here at negative 60 degrees, or equivalently, negative pi over 3. Again, sorry for the cluttered graph here a little bit. Um, hope this stuff makes some sense. I know radians and angles can definitely be, be pretty confusing. Um, again, I would say definitely try to practice converting from one to the other and also finding where they are on the circle, because we'll definitely use this stuff when we start talking about sine and cosine.